All right, let's take a look at the clay tubes brush. This is easily probably one of my favorite brushes in the whole entire program. It makes it feel like you're actually really sculpting with uh, pieces of clay that you kind of lay down and smooth out. So let's take a look at that. Just go ahead and tap B. It's going to bring up your brush menu and hit C for all brushes that start with C. And then we're going to go to clay tubes. You can see there's a clay and there's a clay buildup. Um, they're kind of similar, but clay tubes is probably my favorite. So let's go ahead and tap that. And you can see if we just go ahead and draw on the model, just like the standard brush, we've got Z add, Z subtract. We've got the intensity for the brush and the draw size. Um, but the way that this brush builds up is quite a bit different. So you can see that if we draw this, it's kind of like laying down strips of clay on top of one another. Um, and if you sculpt traditionally, you'll know that uh, that's something that you do quite often. So I really like this brush just to build up the surface and get more of a, uh, a rough feel, like more of a natural kind of uh, look, other than just the straight up digital look for things. And I also like it because I like um, to do muscle fibers. So this to me kind of feels like you are laying down individual strips of muscle fibers and you can kind of just quickly uh, sculpt on that and then go ahead and smooth that out. And I'll give you the different options for things to um, quickly build up a surface. and then get a nice look that's a little more organic when you're done. So you can see if I had some of these serratus muscles. You can just really rough these things out. And obviously your brush size plays a part in what you're laying down. Your intensity uh, matters. And you can also use uh, Lazy Mouse with this brush as well, just like you did with the standard brush. So we can turn that on. We've got the stroke type over here. You can see I can use the Lazy Mouse with this. I usually don't have Lazy Mouse turned on with this, just because typically whenever I'm using this brush, I want it to look more organic and more natural, so the um, inconsistencies with the stroke I think works better. So let's go ahead and smooth that out. Let's go ahead and see what this would look like if I had this. Um, Another thing I like to do, you can see with this uh, alpha that's put on there, it's, it works okay. Um, I kind of like to change it to maybe alpha 06, which gives it a little bit um, more of a rounded kind of shape at the, at the bottom. And it's not quite as rough as the square alpha. So if there's anything that I really change about this brush, that would be about it, is the, uh, the alpha on there. Sometimes I like to change it. Depends on what, what the look is that you're going for. Now typically, after I would maybe use this brush, to emphasize some of the lines that I was making, I would go back to the uh, standard brush and I set up a hotkey for one for that. Um, again, just to bring that up, B for brushes, S for all S brushes, and then T for standard. And this is where I'd turn on the lazy mouse and put on alpha 39 and make my brush size smaller. 
maybe drag this radius down to something smaller. And that's where I would just kind of hit some of these shapes, holding down Alt to dig in, to kind of emphasize a little bit of what I'm looking at. Um, this wax material that loads up with the uh, default project, sometimes it might be a little bit hard for you to see the detail that you're working on, so you might want to just switch over to this map cap gray. And I'm going to change the color just to white, so it's just going to be pure gray. Now with this shader on, you can kind of see a little more detail of what is actually going on with the model. It doesn't have that cool kind of uh, super sculpty look to it, but this will let you see a little bit better what the true shape of this model is. So this is how you're going to be able to get more of a an organic kind of look using some of these combinations. And you can always switch back and forth between trying to do this hard edge uh, work right alongside with the organic stuff that's pretty popular these days, mixing together the, uh, the organic with, uh, with the hard surface to give that futuristic kind of uh, cyber look. And right now I'm just kind of doodling and having having fun. This it's just fun to um, build these kind of shapes and and work on this stuff. But I think you get the um, the gist of how this brush is probably going to be working for you. So again, tap B, C for clay, and then clay tubes. And if you wanted to build up those surfaces a little bit more. And maybe the intensity is just a little too high, so you can tap that and drag that down a little bit lower. So you can just kind of lay in like these little tiny shapes. And like I was saying, if you have worked traditionally with clay before, you build up like little muscle structure and stuff like that. You take these little balls of clay, roll it up, and just kind of spread it around on the model, and you get these kind of cool results. Then if you're going to take anything like uh, rubbing alcohol or lighter fluid or whatever it is that you use to um, smooth your model with, um, holding down shift is going to smooth force in the computer. But you can really emulate what you're going to do in the real world for sculpting and you're able to do it inside the computer with no mess, no fumes, and not too many restrictions anymore. Things are getting really cool in the uh, digital realm for sculpting, so much so to the point where you really can do everything you can do with traditional sculpting, and you can do more. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and leave that.